The bids are in. The gavels drop. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right. This is Wine Bid's podcast editing at all things wine value, wine retail, wine auctions, and just wine. My name is Jeff Gern. I'm on the Wine Bid marketing team. With me, as always, is Paul Walker, the big brain of Bordeaux, as everyone <laughs> calls him, our wine expert. Welcome to the podcast, oh Paul. Boy. Today, oh boy, welcome, Jeff. Big brain of Bordeaux. I, I big mean, brain of Bordeaux. Calling me an expert after that. I mean, that's yes, wholly inaccurate. But well, yeah, it's right. it's pretty accurate to me. It's just what I hear people calling you all the time. Like I was just in our office this last week, and I mean, people were saying it all. I I never even heard the word. I didn't know his name was Paul for like six months because that's all people call him. Today, we're going to be going through our wine auction recap uh, of the auction just happened over this past week. Let's jump right into it. Let's start with the stuff that, you know, pulled up a lot of bids and where we saw a lot of movement. I want to start with Riesling. This 2013 Keller Dallesheimer uh, Hubacher Riesling Trocken Grosses Gewachs. We had five of them, which started... At $55 a bottle. So 2013 started at $55 a bottle, hammered at three, right around $310 a bottle. Yeah. What? 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 Yeah. And I was just looking at the bid history because I saw the numbers and I was blown away. But then it wasn't like, you know, there were obviously multiple bidders, but it came down to two people at the end who won, I think who are really going for it. So the rest of them, you know, ended up just getting lost in the mix, but yeah, that's nuts. And it's also, also, I think that's the only time we've sold this particular wine, obviously with this, you know, this gross of Skybox. No, we, we sold it in 2017 for 55. The same, but is it the same? It's the same bottle. The number number? Yeah, you're right. Okay, my bad. It is. It, it is quite a few years ago. Yeah, for fifty yeah, six like, bucks. <laughs> I so, mean, so, since 2017, you know, things have changed with Keller wines. That's for if, sure. If in 2017 there. you procured 150,000 cases, oh, here we go. Yeah. Just wine investment advice. Ever use a hundred thousand cases? A hundred thousand cases of this storage. There are probably top. five cases in that are exported. <laughs> <Am I, laughs> of of if, if that, if there's even of, of the like, yeah, of the maybe you know five hundred cases that were made, <laughs> you procured a hundred. Five hundred, probably not even that many. Probably like you would, barrel, you, would, you can retire. It's mine. like winning the lottery. Twenty five yeah. cases, maybe. And all you would need to do is store those for six years. <laughs> Um, that is crazy. I mean, no, there's no way, you know, in 17, you would have, you would have been able to predict that. Cause I think also that's probably not too far after release. Was, I mean, I don't think there's any years. way last month I could have predicted that. Like, <laughs> like, like well, we did, I think 17 uh, of 20 of, two, of the two thousands or 17th of September. I don't know that I could have, yeah. maybe I could have predicted it, but well, it was definitely, it was definitely on my, my list of picks for last week because I was like, oh, that's that's a, that seems reasonable for <laughs> Keller wine fifty five. Well, I mean, yeah. could could you predict that it was going to go for more than fifty five? Yes. Would you could you predict that it was going to go for like over three hundred dollars? No, no, because because I, I think some of the the truck and wines that the non grossest box, for lack of a better term, were not nearly as expensive as this. They were they were close to a hundred bucks, but not not you know not over. But the GG designation is another, that's another level of seriousness when it comes to rarity and popularity for this producer, especially. So let's talk a little bit about uh, one of our perennial favorites, Poufiné. We have yeah, these, these Jura wines keep getting more and more popular. They keep we, jumping up. Yeah, what, a lot no, of like, producers always get action. At Ganavat, we seem to talk about every week. Poufiné seems to be making more and more appearances and there were yeah. multiple lots of this too that i just noticed that this wasn't the only one no they no. had multiple bottles as well so they, they all went and sold above they all sold it started much the same right right yeah, they like sell above 80 85 but, bucks 80 but you're bucks, seeing yeah. a market correction you're seeing the market say like no no, no these wines are, are worth more because we do see you know puffine and then got about coming into auction quite you know I wouldn't say they're super common, but I also don't think they're rare. Like they, no, they, to they're in, they trickle in. Yeah, they're in fairly often. Every every few weeks, probably we see you know various kind of popular producers in the Jura, and that's <laughs> is definitely one of them. I thought it was interesting. I'll mention this like 
2014, Dominique Laurent, Volney, uh, Santineau, Villevin, uh, seven, we had two of them, seven bits from 40 to 59. One thing I will mention is that the Keller notwithstanding, almost everything that we sold this week that got a lot of bids this week was in the sub $100 range. And there's a lot of stuff in the sub sub $50 range. Private sellers, uh, Reese, Mount Pajaro, uh, Ceritas, Christum, just a lot more action, I would say, in the sub $100 and even sub $50 range right now, which is kind of interesting to interesting to, to see. But um, let, me, let me bring up an example that does yeah. not could flow in with that that take, which is the Mayo Camusier Richborgs again, multiple bottles, but both of them hammered at uh, let's see, they started at sixteen seventy, hammered at twenty two seventy. So people were not afraid to go big for Mayo Camusier Richborg 05 last week. Twenty two seventy, I think. I'm not mistaken, it's the highest we've ever sold that wine. For. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and maybe not for you know late eighties vintages or something. But look, there there for, there are a few sure. that break the mold. The fourteen Henri Boileau Merceau Le Charmes six bids to one twenty five to about one one sixty one fifty five one sixty, and then we had the O two Mag of Latour. We had two of those, which five bids took them from eight eighty five to sell right around a th- uh, basically a thousand ten each. I mean, there, it's not that there wasn't any action at the high end of the market. <clears throat> I guess I'm just saying, like, I felt like the script is kind of being flipped a little bit recently over the last few weeks, maybe months, where we're seeing more action at the bottom end of the market, more bidding. I think at the at, at the sub one hundred, sub fifty end of the market. There's there's a lot more going on there. It's also been a, like a a real steady influx of wines that have a few years on them, right? Like the Poufinet wines yeah. are are almost 10 years old. You know, a lot of these other other wines, like there's there was Tignanello with a few years on it. So things that are totally out of retail, right? They're not available except in the secondary market. And so it's kind of funny where to see where those are going to go. 16 VR, I mean, these wines aren't going to break any records, but it's interesting to st- see something like that. Francois Villar, Cornas, Juve, which like at 30 bucks, you're like, oh, that's a steal for, you know, a serious producer in Cornas with, you know, a few years on it from good vintage. Well, yeah. obviously it was because it got bit up to, you know, to 45, cool. $47, which or- still isn't terrible, right? Like that's, that seems to be like a, a reasonable <laughs> range for, or- for something like that. Or, or like the 15 Chateau Monolina Chardonnay, which we had three of six bids to goes from 45 and they ended up hammering at 61. Not like some dramatic. The 15? Part. The 15, yeah. Chateau oh, that's interesting. So, I mean, it's got a few years of age on it. Yeah, yeah. those wines, those wines can age too. That Chardonnay, that, that's yeah. not something that is going to fade after, you know, three or four years. Well, exactly. But I guess, I guess my point is like, I think you're seeing people say like, hey, uh, I'm going to, you know, maybe a year or two ago, I was in the hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollar range on Chardonnay. But you know, Monolina makes some phenomenal Chardonnay. There's fifteens in auction, forty five dollars, even sixty, sixty one dollars. That's not crazy for that Chardonnay with a little bit of age on it because it's gonna, it's gonna be. No, sick. it's also. I mean, I don't know anything about where Montalina retail pricing is, but I would imagine the Chardonnay is probably getting close to sixty bucks, especially from the winery. And I don't know if you can buy it very readily at retail i suppose i could do a few minutes of research to figure that out but that's interesting that's that's still actually that seems a little high but anyway you're looking it's at collectible it's collectible wine chateau montalina chardonnay you're looking at probably anywhere from 65 to 75 dollars yeah okay right that's more so than i thought at the at the even at 62 you know still a fantastic deal and granted you, you're gonna have like auction, buyer's premiums, and shipping. But uh, I mean, I'm looking online, a lot of sellers are, you know, busted it out for 70, 74 99 a bottle. Yeah, um, and then you yeah. have to ship to yourself. Again, looking at that, I and this one's a 15 with, with a little bit of age on it. So, you know, like I said, I and I do like a decent age for Chardonnays that can age and Monolina can age. Like I like something that's got a a few years on it, like to me, yeah. it tastes better. Now, um, it's funny because there's there's six, there were sixteen and also eighteen. I was just kind of scrolling down the list, and the sixteen started at fifty, then got multiple bids, hammered at about fifty four, fifty five. But the eighteen started at forty five and didn't really 
go much higher than that. Sold for about 46, 47 bucks a bottle, three bottles in each lot. So it's kind of funny, you know, the, the more recent release it is, the better deal it is because 18, well, that's, I mean, that's still probably what they're probably releasing the 21 now, I would imagine. So probably 18 for 46, uh, 47 bucks is it? That's a, that's a good deal, right? Like that's a good deal. Compared yeah. It's, to you. The it's 15 the, for going for, you know, 70 or whatever it was, 60 bucks. Yeah, it looks like it's the 21 that I'm seeing at retail. 21, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It's 21. It's the 21 I'm seeing at retail right now. Hey, let's uh, let's get out of this Montalina rabbit hole. But, but oh. why, don't, why don't we go over to heavy hitters, weekly winners, shall we? Okay. Let's talk about, just at the very top end, 03, Jean-Louis Chave, Hermitage, Cuvée, Kathleen, Kathleen. $5,000. I First of all, I always think it's cool when you see a Northern Rhone, or it, honestly, I think it's cool when you see anything outside of Napa or Burgundy capture or Bordeaux capture a top spot. So it's really neat to see, you know, our highest price bottle this week be a, a Northern Rhone wine. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> right. That is, right. I mean, it's exceedingly sought after and rare release. And it's always been horrifically expensive, but that is uh, that is something else, especially too. Oh, three is is I mean, wine I'm sure is amazing, but you know that was that was one of those we talk about it, Bordeaux and Burgundy, but in in the Rhone too, it was very hot, <laughs> so you know it was, well, a, it was but, a somewhat controversial vintage. But, but just to give you an idea, it's like it's like five thousand dollars is our top seller at you know for the the O three Chave Cuvée Kathleen Hermitage. Then number two is 05 Coast Rica Cortan Charlemagne. Yeah, I know. I you kind know, of expected the opposite. <laughs> number three is 05 Domain No Romani Conti Saint Pavant, right? Uh, well, for Bottle, actually, no, there were two of those. There were two of those. Are you talking about Latash, the 17? No, I'm talking about the Saint Pavant. There's well, the no, there were two. There Latash were... is number four, and there were two yeah, of those. Yeah. One got sold for 37.35. So my, my, I guess my point is like number one's Roan, and then it's Burgundy, Burgundy, Burgundy. Number and then there was, there was we talked about some of the um, Madeiras that were in yes. two weeks ago. Yes, and it looks like one of those rolled over, but then sold at thirty four twenty five. Which I mean, that's Eight. obviously extremely rare. Good luck, you know, replacing an eighteen thirty seven. Eighteen thirty seven. Yeah, right. Thirty four twenty five. That's 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 a lot. That's high. Pre from Civil War era Madeira. I mean, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Martin Van Buren was president of the United States. <laughs> when that line was made, by the factoid that you pulled out there, <clears throat> yeah, I, well, I, you know, you know me, I know, I know uh, all the presidents, the kinds of trivial things, yeah, all those trivial things. And by the way, so th then after that, it's 05 Domain of Maria Comedy Conti Saint Pavant again, third two hundred. Um, call it Romani Comedy. Is that what you said? Romani Conti, and then uh, Emmanuel Rougeau von Romani Cro Parento Mag for yeah, those 08 Cro Parento Mags finally hammer. Right? I think it you know it took a little while. Um, so pretty expensive, but it's like, and then, and then a 12 screaming old Camry seven yawn, uh, two of those sold for, you know, basically $3,005 each. My point is just, it's like, it's like a lot of usual suspects, but I thought it was really cool to see the Madeira in there and to see the John Louis shot. Like, I mean, I would love to taste the Madeira from 1837. Like how amazing, yeah. how cool is that going to be? You're, I mean, now you're getting into the territory when Madeira was like super popular, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, by, by the way, the one I had, the one that I thought was really interesting, there was this article I was reading recently. They found a bunch of wine vats in a, I think it was a four or 5,000 year old Egyptian queen's tomb. Hmm. Yeah. So you think that's still good? I think you got a nice tannin and seriously in, toxic. Uh, but yeah. yeah. How are the vintage charts? What are the vintage charts showing from 2900 BC? <laughs> BC <laughs> more correctly. <but> yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said, never mind. BCE? BCE? Just correcting your, your vernacular. My apologies. My apologies. Let's, let's talk about the week other, winners. Yeah. Some other winners. I, which one surprised me the most is these Bernard Bonin wines. They were on my list as well because I, to yet another producer I'm not familiar with, the, as I like to repeat often to contradict Jeff, I'm not an expert. And this he's is an expert. one of those. That means he's an expert. Anybody what? who says that, that's when you know they're an expert when they're, he's modest. He's extremely <laughs> modest. Anyway, very interesting history with these wines. We've seen very few of them. Interestingly, 
Jeff, they also list the number of bottles on the label. So you can actually refer back to that when you're talking about investment advice. But I, I'm curious as to where you know these, these things will go because they're getting multiple bids now. But anyway, the Bernard Bonin wines, Pouligny Montrachet, like Garenne, hammered at 550. There's not a lot of history, exterior or external auction history to really compare that to. So keep an eye on those. Be interesting to see what happens, especially from, you know, great vintages to where those wines are going. But that's a pretty serious number for something that does not have a lot of secondary market history, period. 2010, Francois Lamarche, Le Grand Bru, hammered at 690. Uh, I think that's a high for most everyone who's sold it. We've mentioned, I think there was a bottle of, or excuse me, a three pack of Trimbach, the Von Ange Tardive Late Harvest, uh, Frederick Remiel, and that hammered at 405, which was a high for that wine for sure. 07 Vegas, Sicilia Unico at 435. Um, you mentioned the Latour mags, 16 Palmer mag at 580, and a one Cheval Blanc at 585. I think, I think this is another one of our picks. But anyway, it seemed like a deal compared yeah. to everything else. And then some some Rousseau, some 14 Rousseaus uh, did quite well as well. For 14 Charm Chambertin at 660 and 14 Jure Village at 410, which is quite a bit. So lots and lots of activity last week. Like you said, a tremendous amount of multiple bids and things, you know, in the 50 to $200 range. Thousands, of, I think over 5,000 bottles sold. So very, very busy auctions right now. Yeah, a lot of really interesting stuff. And I think that wraps it up for our auction recap. For Wine Bids Finally Hammered, this has been Paul Walker and Jeff McGurn wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers. Cheers.